I came to the school, and the funny thing was, everyone always talks about how friendly everybody was. I just expected that was how they were supposed to be. And I, I felt very comfortable. But honestly, my intent was to come to ASU for two years and then transfer to Texas A&M. And uh, I was ROTC. I intended to go to the Air Force. But then I learned what happens when you don't come into A&M as a freshman in the Corps. They, uh, it's worse than hazing. It's, it's really bad. So I decided, first of all, that was one reason. And the other reason, I found my people here. I was in ROTC. Um, most of these folks are still friends of mine all these years later. That was 1979. And uh, I just enjoyed it so much. I quit for a few years. I left in 82 and I returned in 84 and finished, um, completed and commissioned in 1986 with a business degree, BBA primarily in marketing, and was commissioned in the Air Force. ROTC was my thing, and they were. We were so busy with that. We really, most of us, didn't have time for other clubs. Um, we at that time, back in those days, ROTC did the bonfire. We were the only ones. None of the other student organizations did it. So, consequently, and part of the reason that I had to quit for a few years, I didn't attend a lot of classes. I was so busy. But I, one thing that always stuck with me was my ROTC professors. Most of them, some maybe not, but most of them really seemed to enjoy their job and they enjoyed being mentors. And that was where I learned what what a mentor is and what they do. And um, it kind of led me, when the opportunity arose in 2001, I returned as an ROTC instructor here at ASU. First of all, I, I left the Air Force active duty in 1992. And so I was in the reserves. And at that time, reserves weren't allowed to return to active duty. And in 2001, there was a shortage of ROTC instructors. And I was actually here at Goodfellow doing reserve work. And they had opened it up to reservists to return for a three-year period. And so I called up the uh, assignments people and I said, I'd like to do that as long as you send me to Angelo State. And I knew there was an opening here, so I'd, I, I knew they would say yes. And they didn't have to worry about moving me. I was already here, uh, had a place to live. And so it was really kind of a slam dunk for the Air Force and for me. And I enjoyed it. They put me in charge of recruiting and teaching the freshmen. So I got the babies when they came in. And they were like my kids. And thanks to things like social media, I'm able to keep in touch with all of those kids. They're now retiring there's many of them are coming up on retiring, which makes me feel old. But I've kept in touch with them all their lives, and I was able to give them information. A few of them left active duty and decided to do the reserves because they saw what I was able to do, especially as a mom. I was able to get out, be a mom for a few years and just do the, the once a month duty and once a year duty that reserves do. And I was able to concentrate on being a mom in those early years. Uh, my favorite uh, boss was Colonel Ernie Feltz. He passed away a few years ago. He was probably the most level-headed. Uh, I learned so much from him. I can't quantify it. I can't give uh, any definite examples. But he, as well as some of the other uh, officers on duty at the time, too, I do remember one of them, he used to say, everyone's an example. Some are good examples. Some are bad examples. But everyone's an example. And I, that, that little phrase I've always kept. But Colonel Feltz was probably the very best. He was, my son didn't understand the word Colonel. And so he used to call him Uncle Feltz. <laughs> and so um, he was a family man himself and he understood family. And he, he really cared for the students. And that was important to me. Just walking back on campus today, and I'm, I'm on campus a lot, but it's just such a relaxed, friendly atmosphere. One example I had when we, my husband and I, he's not from here. He went to, you know, St. Louis University and he always felt like he was bad in math. So when we returned here in 2001, he wanted to come to ASU and just take a math class to get better. 
he was struggling. And I said, well, go talk to the professor. And he said, do they do that? And I said, yes. Well, the first time he went, it was funny because he went to the to the math department and his professor was out to, for lunch. I mean, they, they do have office hours. They, they don't live there. And uh, another professor picked his head out and said, yeah, whoever, he's gone right now. I can help you. And these are PhDs. You don't get that at large universities. Here at Angelo State, you get people who are truly experts in their field and they have time for you. And they're interested in having time for you. They're not pushing you away because they want to do a research project. They, they actually care about the students and their learning. I, I love that. The campus itself, it's, it's not too big. One of the things I used to see with my ROTC cadets because, and you know where that building is, wow, you have to cross the street to get to the building from the parking. And they would complain about parking. And I had, and I had just come from a conference at UT. And I said, you don't understand. I had to park about a half a mile away from the building. And the weather wasn't really great. It was raining or windy or something that day. I said, y'all just have to cross the street. It's not a big deal. And even walking from one end of the campus to the other isn't that bad. It's it's 90% of the time here, we have great weather too. So I love it. And the campus is a family. It truly is a family. I, I, I love the atmosphere here. One fun thing that we got to do with ROTC, the ROTC car scholarship preceded the car academic scholarship. And the story went with Ernie Feltz that... Robert Carr came to the ROTC detachment and looked around and said, what do you boys need? And it was primarily young men. And the story was, Bernie Feltz said, money. <laughs> and so Robert Carr gave a million dollar endowment to the ROTC department to give scholarships. Well, by the time I started uh, at ASU in 1979, he had already passed, but Nona Carr was still alive. And we had a group of ROTC cadets that would go and sing Christmas carols to her in her home. So I got to go to Nona Carr's house. And I'm not a good singer, but I blended in. And I got to sing Christmas carols to Nona Carr. And we talk about a lot of scholarships kind of being faceless. It's not a faceless scholarship to me. They were wonderful people who cared about us. Another wonderful thing that happened regarding Angela State, and it truly, um, it is the reason we, my husband and I have put a scholarship out there, and one of the big reasons we keep that. My husband was teaching in the aviation program last spring. My mother has um, blood clots to the brain. She was completely immobile. She can't walk. And... If you're lucky if you get six or eight weeks of physical therapy, if you ask for physical therapy. While he was teaching, an email came across on the a Angelo State email system. And he said, the physical therapy department is looking for patients. Neuro injuries are priority. They, they really wanted that. Well, that's my mother. And so immediately I called and I, I joke sometimes that she must have hit the send button and immediately her phone was ringing and we got together. My mother's been having physical therapy now for a year. You can't get that under your regular insurance. The neat thing to me, too, is the students are learning so much from treating my mother because a neuro patient is a lot different than anyone else. It, it truly, it has truly bound me to this school. And in 1979, when I first started, I had no idea how important this school was going to be to me and to the people that I love. So...